G'day guys, Billy here. We're just going past the old Dumble Young Club guys. Did a video on a few days ago. I'm going to do another video today, right now guys. The old Dumba Young Farmers Centre. Childhood memories wherever I go, guys. So to the left where that power pole is, that's where I lit a fire. Someone threw a box of matches at me to set me up. I'm going to do a video on childhood memories at the old Farmers Centre, guys. This one right here. Back in the 1970s, I was born in 1971. So in the late 1970s, guys, early, very, very early 1980s. To the left here. Just to the left here, guys, where these in here. So all in that bush there, guys, you'll see more in a minute, but right here. So back in the early 1970s, oh sorry, late 1970s, very early 1980s, me and my mates would be bored, we'd have no money. And uh, back in the old days, guys, back then, like I say, late 1970s, very early 1980s, me and my mates would drive it right around on our old chopper bicycles you know the long handle bikes with all the streamers off the handlebars and the big long bicycle seats and back then guys all the farmers would have their old trucks and tractors and harvesters parked on the other side of the road where I'm right am right now not here but those tractors like this one here old tractors like this one here guys that yellow one and all the doors would always be open and all in this bush in here there used to be all old sunshine harvesters just wrecks and a few old cars so it was a bit of a a scrap yard for old abandoned cars holdens and chevs and fords old sunshine harvesters and other farm machinery so it was a dumping ground but anyway guys So there'd be old harvesters like old tractors like this guys not this year this is a pretty modern one but from the 19 early 1970s very early 1980s and like I say me and my mates would have no money at all you know and a lot of these farmers would leave their money in the ashtrays not just their money their cigarettes and so forth inside the cabins and uh, so me and my mates we weren't stupid guys. We do the same at the Dumbyong District Club as well. All the men would leave their utes and the cars parked outside the Dumbyong Club. And we'd raid the ashtrays and the dashboards. where this big shed is here to the left guys it used to be covered in trucks and tractors awaiting to get repairs by the mechanics at the farmer's centre and we drive down this alleyway here on our bikes on a weekend it was always on a Saturday or a Sunday the old harvesters like this not that brand new one but like that from the 1970s and 1980s tractors like this with the cabs you know be fully enclosed cabs and all the doors would be always opened 
and we'd open up all the doors and in the ashtrays would be full of loose change usually five cent pieces, ten cent pieces twenty cent pieces and if we were really lucky guys, fifty cent pieces so back then 50 cents was a lot of money guys you could buy a lot for that a couple of ice creams, some lollies a packet of chips and uh, like I say guys and anyway one day I was riding my bike past this area probably a few days later and there's a cop car a police car and it scared the absolute shit out of me so uh but anyway guys that's it just a quick memories of uh, riding the old ashtrays and right here guys is the old grapevines I've actually done a video on this as private but we come and get nice grapes these grapevines there date back to the early 1900s same goes with the old fig tree what we what you might have just seen it's all old fig trees And anyway guys, so this is one of the alleyways. I did a video the other day, so we'll go down this alleyway. Remember being chased through this alleyway by a couple of young blokes in their car chasing me. I can't remember why. It was pretty scary guys. They were chasing me for some reason. I think they just wanted to bash me up down this exact alleyway right here guys a couple of young blokes like you know probably just got their license 17 or 18 years of age I know who they are too so these alleyways are very very common in Western Australia guys brings back a lot of childhood memories in Kalgoorlie Kalgoorlie where my grandfather lived and beautiful childhood memories of Kalgoorlie these uh, alleyways are a little bit different over in Katanning the alleyways in Katanning about 50 kilometers look exactly like the alleyways in Kalgoorlie they're covered in really old corrugated iron sheets whereas these ones that you can see here are all basically pretty new like this one here is a tin one here this is like kind of like Kalgoorlie but in Kalgoorlie usually the tins are all different colours we'll drive down another alleyway guys and I'll show you so there's three main alleyways two big long alleyways and uh, one short alleyway the next alleyway brings back a lot of horrible memories for me guys I'll tell you about that one in a minute nearly up the end of this alleyway guys you, as a kid guys you never wanted to get trapped in an alleyway so the because kids would bash you up the old kids here's a corrugated fence so you what looks similar to Kalgoorlie one next time I go to Katanning I'll we'll drive down some alleyways in Katanning guys they're beautiful old alleyways and all the corrugated sheets are all different colors and one day if I go to Kalgoorlie I reckon I will one day I'll show you exactly what they look like alright so that's one alleyway but this next alleyway is a really bad one what brings back nightmare memories for me 
what we might do guys is we'll drive down this street here give you a bit of a tour and then we'll drive up from the very end so this is a one of the streets of Dumbayong So there's two main streets in Dumbuyang, Harvey Street and Taylor Street. And there's a couple of other ones, or oh, Absalon Street's the main street. Right over there's a school that I went to guys from year one all the way up to year ten. Just to the right here you can see the Uniting Church, that's the church I go to sometimes, I haven't been for years guys, but anyway, this building here is where I went for grade one and grade two. Just in there. So that takes back to the early 1900s. I've done videos on the school before guys. And here's a, my most favourite building of all. I think they must panic when they see me driving past. Guys think I'm going to drive my truck into the front of the building. That's a shire of Dunbyung officers. Right, they get worried when they see me park here. A few cans of... Uh... Anyway. I never go in there guys. I haven't been in there for years. And that's the building where I went into and they basically gave my dad dad's cremated ashes in a shitty cardboard box in a plastic bag. That's the ambulance station, volunteer. Right, here's a volunteer fire station, guys. They might have a photo of me hanging up there, I reckon. The old volunteer fire station guys. The reason I say that, because they blame me all for the fires in Dumbleyung. The old volunteer fire station guys, but it was a big setup. I didn't light any fires. Bastards. That's the Woody Tours, where Grant's business is. Woody Tours, Aboriginal Tours. And there's a club. Bastards in there as well, guys. Bastards. All right. So we'll just go up here and do another U-turn. There's more to see guys, we've just driven past here. And that's a dumb, sorry, the uh, the Collie Lake King Road, this road here, the main road what goes all the way to Esperance, about 500 kilos, kilometres away. And, and to Collie. So it's a Collie Lake King Road. Whoops, I just passed it. Sorry guys. I missed the alleyway. Oh. We'll go up this street. This is Taylor Street, guys. And then we'll come back down that alleyway. So this is the other main street. And that's the clubhouse that I grew up in, right there guys, that's the clubhouse. That's the house that I got blamed for burning down when I was a kid. Once again the bastard set me up. I was inside the house guys when I was about 18 months of old and 
some bastard came in the house and set the house on fire while I was in it, I reckon. And I got the blame for it. How, how the fuck could I light a fire when I'm 18 months of old, guys? My mum and dad were cleaning the club and luckily I walked over to the club and told mum the house was on fire. So, so three fires I got blamed for, actually four fires, guys. And this is a the old shore of Dumbayong in there, the works depot. Here's the old Catholic church, what's been closed for probably 10 or 20 years. It needs to bloody reopen, guys. Everyone's lost faith in God. You know, the worst thing is, guys, all these farmers send their kids to these multi-million dollar private schools, probably paying $50,000 a year for their private education in a Christian, Anglican or a Catholic school, and none of them even fucking believe in God. Anyway, that's a school right there, guys, what I got blamed for burning down. I got blamed for burning it down. Horrific memories from that place as well, guys. By t especially by two school teachers who sadistically humiliated me and bullied me when I was in from, from the age of 13 to 15. There's a lot of other shit happened to me prior to that too, guys, but from the age of 13 to 15, I was the only boy in my class. And these teachers went out of their way to humiliate me in front of the girls, guys. So there was me and probably seven or eight girls. And these bastards, these, this male and female teacher, my maths teacher, Jackie and my uh, science teacher Milton loved to make a fool out of me physically hurt me in front of the girls physically humiliated me while I was going through puberty anyway guys and this is the other alleyway, I actually thought it was longer. But right here guys, this, I had a lot of horrific memories in this alleyway here guys, because the reason I used to, the memories, I used to walk down this alleyway to go to guitar lessons. So this house where this bird cage is, I think, possibly. Yeah, that's a house. So where that bird cage is there guys, there's a house directly to the right, I used to go to guitar lessons trying to learn how to play the guitar and uh, I'd always get cornered by these bullies and I was only like eight to ten years of age carrying this guitar from all the way from my house so probably about 1500 meters away the guitar was basically the same size as me carrying it in a plastic I'm oh, sorry in a black vinyl bag and these pricks who lived on this little alleyway would always corner me and humiliate me or bash me up. I just had no chance, guys. Anyway, and there's some just more fences what kind of remind me of Kalgoorlie, but you know, just homemade fences made with corrugated iron. But these weren't, but like I say, guys. The Kalgoorlie alleyways are absolutely beautiful and hi historic. A lot of them are made out of old coffee tins, not just corrugated iron, a lot of uh, old biscuit tins and coffee tins, and I don't know, they're all homemade. I'll put some links in the video and show you. And that's the old school over there, guys. And I did a video not too long ago. And that beautiful big Port Jackson fig tree is this, the uh, tree what my mum planted around 45 years ago. In the middle of the screen. I've got the same tree growing in my backyard.
And that's the Absalon Street down there, guys. And right now, guys, rarely do I ever do this, but we'll go for a, a drive down through the main street of Dumble Young. So I never do this, guys. I just hate going down the main street of Dumble Young. All right, so. This is the main street, Absalon Street. We might as well give you a quick tour of the whole bloody town while I'm doing this video, guys. So this is the main street. This is the old War Veterans Memorial, just in here, guys, for the World War One, World War Two, Vietnam. The old War Memorial. So, so War Memorials are extremely common in every town in Australia. It's a roadhouse. Beautiful memories of that roadhouse when I was a kid with my best mate Vernon Cooper and Brycey Cooper. There's the co-op, the general store. It's closing in six weeks due to lack of community support. And this is a Dumble Young pub. Done heaps of videos on this before, guys. One of the most famous pubs in the Wheat Belt region of West Australia. It's built in 1914. And while I'm in the mood, guys, I might as well show you down here. This is the old Stubbs Park. Stubbs Park. So this is the main sporting oval for netball, tennis, cricket, hockey. And uh, we used to have a beautiful uh, Jim Carner here, like a little agricultural show. I used to um, I used to be a boundary umpire for football here when I was a kid guys I was pretty good at it anyway right here this building here is where the, my dad used to work on the Jim Carner day and serve beer so you can still see the shiny beer thing in the middle of the screen probably a sink anyway that's where dad used to work on every Jim Carner and you know it'd be hundreds of men so I'll tell you a quick story about the old Jim Carner guys in about 1980 or give or take a year or so the old Dumbo Young Jim Carner used to have what well, at the end the highlight of the Dumbo Young Jim Carner was the greasy pig a farmer would release the greasy pig like a little tiny pig um, in, uh, and it'd be covered in grease, okay? So the pig was big enough so it could be eaten and whoever caught the pig could roast it, you know, eat it, lamb, uh, pork chops and everything else. 
and this is the old Stubbs Park Pavilion guys where people would watch the football and cricket you can see the scoreboard there it used to be also a trotting track for trotting horses so that's that uh, little stand there is for the uh, trotting horse announcer who would call the race but like I say guys, so in the 19, about 1980 I reckon it was and it went on for years for deck, you know, probably since the 1950s probably all the way to the 1920s probably so it's a highlight of the day, the greasy pig so the pig would be released on this oval okay, and there'd be probably one or two hundred blokes on this oval so this is a football oval this for AFL football so the pig would be released on this oval guys and there'd be probably a hundred to two hundred blokes Aboriginal blokes white blokes and uh, I was there on the day I'll never forget it guys but anyway uh, so the pig was released and uh, somehow in the mayhem I, I can't tell the whole story guys I've done a video on it it's all on my YouTube channel but it's private uh, but anyway, I think a Noongar Aboriginal bloke caught the pig and uh, a couple of white blokes weren't happy that he caught the pig so he got king hit knocked out or something like that or hit in the face or the jaw and uh, then suddenly there was an all-out riot between the white fellas and the, and the Noongar people and uh, this riot probably went on for a full day maybe a couple of days it was police came to Dumbiung from all over the great southern region in Katanning, Narrigan, probably even Perth, Albany Albany's 250 kilometres away and uh, most of the Noongar people were arrested guys I don't think any white people were, any white blokes but a lot of Noongars were I was sent to Albany Jail and also the Dumbiung Jail. We used to have a little jail here in Dumbiung. They still have got cells here in Dumbiung, but not the old cells. So blokes got their, their jaws broken, probably maybe a couple might have got their arms broken. Definitely jaws broken, teeth knocked out. And this is the old trotting track for horses. But anyway guys, just to cut a long story short, most of the Noongars got arrested. You know, the riot went on for a full day and full night. As I say, police were called from all over southern West Australia, Albany, Katanning, Perth, possibly. Perth's the capital city of Western Australia. And uh, it changed the whole community of Dumbuyong, guys and they never ever held a greasy pig again so I have got a story about it one day it's on my YouTube channel guys it's private um, maybe I'll release it again one day uh, Grant, my Noongar mate Grant he got arrested so did his brother Graham all, all of his family got arrested like all the men got arrested sent to jail as I say, no white fellas got arrested, guys. Uh, yeah, but I was definitely there. I remember it. I was standing on the same oval, guys. At this end of the oval where I am right now, I remember it. I'll show you in a minute. And as you've seen me doing videos on Meteorite Island, guys. So here's a pile of sand from Meteorite Island. I wonder if there's any Aboriginal stone relics in there. All right, and this is the tennis courts. So beautiful grass tennis courts, guys. So we have got really good uh, um, sporting facilities in Dumbuyung, guys. That's a good thing about Dumbuyung. So I'll tell you a few more stories, guys. Go on, Sophie. 
As I say, this is the same what comes from Meteorite Island, guys. Beautiful yellow sand. So right here, guys, is where I was, probably near where those those uh, goalposts are. That's where I was when the riot happened. And the whole oval was covered in people fighting. And it made Australia-wide news headlines, guys. It was on every news channel all around Australia. I know this because my dad's sister and her husband saw it on the news in Melbourne, in Victoria. So it made Australia-wide headlines, guys. And also, guys, when I was a kid, I was a champion cricket player, okay? A really, really good cricket player, guys. And I was also a good football player, guys, but I was never, ever welcome to play football for the Dumble Young Cookran Football Club. I went to training, but I was just never made welcome, guys. I played for uh, Wickerpin Football Club, um, Narrogen. I went to Country Week Football for Narrogen uh, High School. And I also played football in Townsville. Um, they had four football, AFL football teams in Townsville. And I was a good footy player, guys. My brother, sorry, my cousin, oh, my cousin, my nephew, Ryan Melvin, he's the uh, uh, captain of the Wickerpin Football Club. Seventh time champion Ferrison, best football player in a row, guys. So for seven years in a row, he's won the Ferrison best footballer for the Wickham, Wickapen A grade football club. My brother-in-law, Kim Yogi Melvin, he's the president of the Upper Great Southern Football League. So that's a huge football league in the Upper Great Southern region of West Australia. And I was a bloody good football player, guys, but I'll tell you another story. As I say, champion cricket player. But before I start on this story, guys, being with cricket, I was a champion uh, batsman. I was pretty good at bowling, but I was an expert fielder. My arm was so strong, guys. I'm not lying. I remember someone hit a four or a six from the cricket oval. The cricket green just over there. See that little sandy patch in the middle of the screen? So that's the cricket pitch. So I was fielding over here, or probably over there a little bit, probably another 100 metres away. Someone hit a four over here. And the cricket ball landed probably around here. And my arm was that strong, guys. And I'm skinny, got skinny arms. So I just threw, it would have been around here. And I threw the cricket ball from here all the way to that pitch over there, straight into the arms of the wicket keeper. And I remember there was a bloke standing next to me and he just gasped in absolute disbelief that I threw the cricket ball.